Okay, here we go. And joining me now from Montreal is Kid Mercury. Welcome to the CJN Daily. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. All right. So first, before we get started, you got to give us a little tour of what's all around you, I mean, behind oh, you that everyone's seeing. A tour already? Okay, I'm going to get up. Don't then. get up. Don't get up. Oh, Just tell oh. us what's happening okay, around well, um, because it's Canada Day, I thought that I would, I mean, even though today is Canada Day, so uh, I took this uh, Paul Henderson signed jersey that, was, that I got years ago, and I put it here alongside um, my new jersey that I used the other day at the... Uh, at the Bell Center, the Kid Mercury number 11. Hope you can see that well. And uh, this is the famous hat, the winged messenger's hat right over here, which when I put it on, my magical powers instantly kick in as they just have. So um, yeah, just uh, just having a good time and um, glad to be here today. Tell me about that sweater, because I know that, that it's gotta be a significant number, number 11 and the fact that they gave it to you. Tell us more about how that all came about. Well, number 11 is actually my favorite number, my lucky number. I was born on June 11th. So I've always, since I'm a little boy and I played sports, I've always tried to get number 11. And when I started doing um, the games years ago at the Forum, I obviously wore number 11 and it became my number. It was like Kid Mercury, number 11. So um, this, last, this last version was just uh, given to me recently. It's, uh, it's a game jersey. It's the same jersey that the players wear, but it's got... Kid Mercury, number 11. I hope Brennan Gallagher isn't too upset, but I'm glad to share it with him. He looks a little bit too beat up to be upset about you wearing a jersey. Yeah, I think you're right. He's a warrior. He's a real warrior, that guy. He's the heart and soul of the team. I mean, he's the fighter, you know, not fighter, fighter. He's, you know, when he got injured this year, you just saw we went into like a big landslide. And yeah, he's, he's a wonderful player and he's a great person. So I'm happy to wear the eleven. All right, let's take a step back and start from how does a nice Jewish boy get into this entertainment business and you end up being the mascots of many sports teams? Well, this nice Jewish boy grew up in Cote St. Luke. Um, I went to high school in Wager High and uh, played on a lot of the sports teams, senior football, cross-country running, uh, downhill ski racing. Um, I was always a character. Since I was a little boy, I used to entertain my my family, I would um, make everyone smile, make everyone laugh. And then I eventually, um, in my early 20s, I went to Club Med as an entertainer. And I eventually ended up becoming director of entertainer at Club Med. Uh, I went to beautiful countries. I was in Martinique. I was in Mexico. I was in Tahiti in the South Pacific. Not bad for a little kid from Cote St. Luke living a dream. And that was, you know, without revealing my age that was sometime in the 70s so it was a lot of fun to be at club med in the 70s let's just leave it at that and then um when you came back uh i've read that you know you you were in love with the expos who wasn't when we were i grew up in montreal full disclosure to our audience i'm from ville saint laurent and i grew up as a an expos fan and as of course a habs fan uh, i have to tell you that since i moved to toronto i am now no longer a habs fan i am a Maple Leafs fan. Oh my, my god! Husband, okay. My this husband kills done. me. I know Stop you're the cameras. Yeah. Stop the cameras. <laughs> no, oh. I just had to tell you. I still like them, but because I'm here and my kids grew up here, I cheer for my kids' team, right? Well, of and course. And I just that's how it is. You, I just wanted to tell you how. And I'm sorry to let you know. I just had to get that right out there. No, no, that's okay. And I'm glad you shared that information. And Are I'll you leaving say, now? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm actually glad because now I can just say. I'm actually speaking to a Leafs fan who hasn't won the Stanley Cup since I think it was 68 or 67. 67. 1967, yeah. right. But I mean, we had Expo in Montreal in 67. That was a long time ago. I was a very little, little boy. Me too. I was there too. I had a bus pass, I remember. I would get down to take the 161 bus, you know, it would take you down. And um, so I just want to say, as far as your season went, well, sorry the Montreal Canadiens gave it to you and that we're in the Stanley Cup final and you're not. Absolutely. Let's talk about that whole journey that uh, you you came to be a team mascot um, of many teams, not just the Habs. Um, what, I know you started out with the with the Expos yes. when they in their heyday. Tell us about how, how that how that came to be. Okay, um, I had returned from Club Med and um, I was going to the games because now I was back in the city and you know I hadn't seen professional sports in years. I saw other things at Club Med, but we you know. 
So uh, I just felt there was like a lack of energy at some of the games. The fans were cheering, but there was, there was something missing. And at the time I owned a bar, I just opened a bar on Pine and Clark called Secrets Bar. And um, I thought, why don't I put together a costume and put the big Secrets logo on my back, which I did on my original cape. And I started going to the Expos games. I had this hat originally didn't have the Habs thing. It was just a blue hat and it had an Expos pin on it. Um, where the Habs logo is now, there was, it was a blue hat with the wings. So, and you know, I'd wear it at the games and I'd bring my trumpet and I'd start, you know, all the expos. Actually, I don't know if you can see the, you see, I, I put that there today, just in case you would um, ask me. That's unfortunately from 1981 when Blue Monday and you know the whole story. But uh, so I started going to the expos games and uh, the fans responded very loud at the, at the Olympic Stadium and uh, the character just took off. People were talking about me and also, you know, I'm not very camera shy. So anytime I saw like the big cameras rolling, I'd make sure my trumpet and my face was there. I got on the front page of the Gazette. I was, you know, people were seeing me in California. They were watching a game. They said, oh, we saw you, the camera shot you. So little by little, I, you know, the more I could, the more exposure, the more fun I was having, everyone seemed to like it. I, I wasn't paid at the time. I just was a super fan. I did it because I loved what I was doing. Yeah. And actually my name, Kid Mercury, comes from, um, it actually was given to me, Mercury is the winged messenger. And it was a nickname I got in, in high school and they'd call me Merc, hey Merc. It was just my nickname, Mercury. And the kid came up on, on um, Ted Teven's sports rap show. I, uh, I loved listening to Ted Teven. He had the greatest show anyone from Montreal would remember. Ted Teven. You're gone. Um, That's yeah, right. Yeah, you're gone. And the machine, da, 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 and then the McGarity, get that loser or whatever, you know. So I called him one day and I read him one of my poems because I'm actually a writer and um, I was writing poetry. And I said, why don't I write some sports poetry? So I read him a, a poem about the Expos and he really liked it. And he said, oh, in his really gruff voice, if you remember, he said, who is this mystery caller? And I said, it's, it's Mercury. I just spit out my, my nickname, Mercury. He said, Mercury who, Mercury what? And I just said, I blurted out, Kid. Kid Mercury, because Gary Carter was Kid Carter. Rah, 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 enthusiasm. And that's how I've been my whole life when I play sports. Any team I'm on, I'm always getting the guys going. Or... So that's how Kid Mercury became Kid Mercury on Ted Teven's sports rap show. What does it mean to the city at the moment after 18 months of being hard hit by the pandemic it's not just about being montreal canadians fans that's true too but there must be more to this feeling that you can describe of what it's like living there at the moment good question excellent question um everyone's been through hell and back um with this pandemic especially quebec was hit very hard at the beginning if you remember it started off in those you know elderly care homes and um it's tragic, just, just terrible. And, you know, I don't think anyone realized how long it was going to continue and how long it was going to last. And it just wore, I mean, it, it wore us down uh, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Uh, people, um, unfortunately, my parents are no longer alive, but I know people who couldn't see their, their parents in over a year, a year and a half. I mean, that's very difficult. And so the city has got all this energy and it's, it just feels magical. They're, they're all excited to talk about the Canadians. You see, you know, flags on cars and people are talking. And it, I don't go downtown very often except to go to uh, that last series when I was there. And um, it's just, it's just, there's like a, a feeling of like, wow, we're back. And not just the Canadians. I mean, people, you know, now bars are open again. I watched the game last night at a, a restaurant in the West Island. And of course, when I do this, I'm in my full gear. I have my trumpet, I have my hat, and I walk into the restaurant. And the first thing I do is I'll do something like, you know, just to wake everybody up. And um, yeah, so it was fun. People want to take selfies. When I was actually at the, um, at the Bell Center, a lot of people stopped me at intermission and just wanted a picture. Oh, you're the guy from the forum. You're the guy from, oh, my, my, my father said he remembers you from the forum. Some young girls on the phone or young guys on the phone talking to their parents. Oh, I'm with the trumpet guy. So it, it's, it's very nostalgic.
talk about this trumpet. You also do a conch thing, or you used to do a conch thing oh, with yeah. waking up the ghosts. Did you learn how to blow the shofar like that too? I can blow a shofar, believe it or not, because of when you play the trumpet, <clears throat> you know, the lips are... The embouchure oh. is almost... Is it different? Yeah, it's different because the mouthpiece, if you can see the mouthpiece, it's, um, it's, it's, it's easier to blow a mouthpiece. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I know them all. Anyways, um, this, I've had many, many trumpets over the years. I started trumpet when I was, um, my parents for my bar mitzvah bought me a trumpet. My next door neighbor was Cookie Lazarus. Cookie Lazarus, very famous in the entertainment and music and, and entertainment and sports. I mean, sports and music. Uh, entertainment. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Cookie was my next door neighbor as a kid growing up, and he was like my idol. So I idolized him. He was an athlete. He'd throw the football on the street. We'd always catch the ball. Um, my dad worked extremely hard. So um, he was working most of the time. He had a five and 10 store downtown Montreal. And um, Cookie taught me a couple of different things on the trumpet. And I learned Moon River. And my parents from my bar mitzvah got me a trumpet. And they sent me for lessons to the first trumpeter of the Montreal Symphony, James Ranty. His, his, uh, his place, his music school was in Westmount. And I really wanted to be Herb Alpert. But instead, I was learning um, oats, peas, beans, and barley's grow. So I very quickly got frustrated and I said, I don't want to take lessons anymore. But I, I had developed enough that I could bring a trumpet. And I'm a pretty famous trumpeter. For a guy who was never really a famous trumpeter, everyone knows my trumpet from the from the days of the forum, you know, and now back at the, the Bell Center this last room. And um, so you said you blow shofar. Let's talk a bit about your Jewish upbringing a bit. How uh, observant uh, did you guys go oh. to Haider? You said you had a bar mitzvah. What was your background? Oh, well, I don't really blow the shofar. I know how. I mean, a couple of years ago, the uh, Chabad guys rang the, rang the bell for something and they had a shofar and I was with a friend of mine who's not Jewish and I had them come in the backyard and I said, watch, I'm going to. And so we tried blowing it to get, you know, I, it was funny. It was a pretty funny, funny moment. Let me ask you yeah. about your routine because there must be, you know, all the athletes, they have to like put on their this first and they have like a superstitious routine when they get ready for a game and then they do this. What's your routine when you performed uh, at the, at the new, at the bell center for your. Well, at the Bell Center, it's very different than the years at the at the Forum. At the Forum, I had the run of the place. I could do whatever I chose to do, pretty much, including sometimes, um, you know, getting a little... I once got in trouble because I played na-na-na-na-hey-hey goodbye too early when uh, when the Sabres were coming back in a game where we were up 6-2, to two and Pat Burns actually called from behind the bench and said, tell the trumpeter never to play that again. And when the cop pulled me over and he said, Pat Burns just called from behind the Montreal Canadiens bench. I went ash white. My heart was pounding out of my chest and they never did that again. I always waited to less than a minute to go and make sure we had at least a, a good lead. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's very different because now at all the big arenas, um, Ellen, there's, you know, they have the show that they, they put on, you know, everything is coordinated. It's not as spontaneous. So I get moments when I could blow uh, at the Vegas series. They actually put me up on the on the giant scoreboard, and then they zoomed in. They had an old picture of me from the forum, and then they got me playing the trumpet. Again, because there's so few fans, it just doesn't have the same punch as when there were eighteen thousand fans at the forum. So I know that you were very. Um passionate and close to uh, Patrick Roy and the last Stanley Cup, right? And and um, that, that he was in that series. Patrick Roy or Carey Price? Who's better? What's better? What's worse? What are the differences? Give me your assessment. Wow. That's a good question as well. Um, and I'm not a, like a sports, you know, analytic guy, you know. Patrick Roy was in your face. Carrie Price is so laid back and so soft-spoken most of the time. Patrick Roy, as you know, he did his little fit after the, you know, and he told him, I'm never going to work for you again. Patrick Roy had attitude, and I think he really intimidated people as well with his, you know, he had all these superstitions. He wouldn't, he, he, when he'd skate on the ice, he wouldn't, he wouldn't let his skates touch the blue line or the red line. Um, it's different eras. I, I, I mean, I can't, I don't know. 
better. The game has changed so much. It's so fast now. It's such a quicker game that who knows how Patrick Roy would do in a game of today's speed. So I, I don't think you can compare them. They are both, they're both great goalies. That's all I'll say. There are other people that use this moniker. You know, there's a band, there's a horse, there's a, you know about that. There's Kid Mercury is a band in England. There's a, a thoroughbred that races named Kid Mercury. Are oh, you aware of all this stuff? There's a thoroughbred with my name? Well, I don't know if he knows about you because he's got four legs and you have two, but. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But um, I did once register the name, whatever that means, uh, so I could use it. But I mean, um it's kind of a cool name and everyone in, in this city knows who Kid Mercury is. And actually I'm coming out with a children's book uh, by the end of this year as Kid Mercury. I wrote it 20 years ago for my kids on that trip when we were in the Dominican Republic. And um, uh, that's very exciting because the artwork is beautiful and uh, the stories are very, uh, they're spiritual stories. They're, they're good lessons for children. It's an A to Z spiritual book. So. I'm excited. Wow, that's great. So yeah. we'll look forward to that for Christmas Hanukkah yeah. buying season. Yes, yes. I, so I people really want to know that. how to get it. You'll have it on your website or how it will be? Yeah, my website out. actually now, um, I'm going to have to change it up because if you go to kidmercury.com, it's that old school thing that I once designed as a joke uh, just for my magic business. And I think I'm going to have to um, look into, uh, you know, changing things up again because there's like a whole new resurgence and in me and who I am. So maybe I'll dust off the uh, magic wands and start doing kid shows again because I've been retired for a few years now. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you. So you said you were a magician. So now you've been retired and now this came out of the blue. So it's enjoy the ride, right? Yeah. I'm enjoying it to, to every, that game, that game when we beat Vegas and we were going to the Stanley cup, I was speechless. Like I told you, it was just, you're the, still the, speechless. It's like uh, you can't even believe it. <laughs> the, the rush was good. Do you want Tell me, to me about the 25? Drive for 25. Do you want me to give you a toot on the trumpet before we leave? Because I haven't done that, or you're okay? It's, you, it's your I'll show. You, do, a, do whatever you I'll like. I'll give you something for the Canadians. <laughs> Thank you.